Welcome, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Um, pleased to be back, joining you for another installment of the Columbus Tableau User Group, our summer, our summer 2021 tour. We uh, have an excellent lineup today. As usual, extremely strong lineup. Uh, thanks to all the folks that are joining us on the panel today and then the hard work of primarily Aaron and, and Zach in pulling this fantastic lineup together, as well as uh, meetings that we have framed up for July, August, September, October, I think all the way to like 2030. But uh, I'm Steve Bartos. I head up the advanced analytics team at Worthington Industries. Uh, pleased to join you. and. My fellow member on the leadership team, Aaron Ham. Aaron, over to you. You'd think after a year I'd be used to unmuting myself. Uh, my name is Aaron Ham. I'm a senior cybersecurity engineer at Comcast, um, and I've been using Tableau for about four, almost five years now. Um, work with Steve with the Columbus Tableau User Group and help run the Comcast Tableau User Group based out of Philly. Zach, I'll kick it over to you. Uh, yeah, I'm Zach Geis. Uh, you guys are gonna hear plenty from me later, all the intros, you're gonna get tired of me. So um, there's not much more to say. Erin, you wanna introduce our surprise guest? Absolutely. So today our surprise guest is Lauren, Lauren Burke. Um, she is the Director of Communications with the Women in Analytics Conference. The Women in Analytics Conference is coming up in just a month or two. Um, and so we wanted to give them the opportunity to present. They also have a visualization contest that we wanted to showcase if anyone is interested in doing in the years to come. Um, but Lauren, I'll turn it over to you to talk more about the Women in Analytics. Awesome, thank you. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. Let me know if I am sharing the right one. All right, can you see the right one? Uh, I still see Steve. Steve, you wanna unshare yours? Uh, one second. Yeah. Do you oh, see there we go. Okay. All oh, good. The, the black version or the- Nope, the good version, you're good. <laughs> All right, great. All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name's Lauren Burke. I am the Director of Operations of- and I'm here today to tell you a little bit more about our organization and our upcoming conference. So the mission of Women in Analytics is to increase visibility to women making an impact in the analytics space and to provide a platform for those women to lead the conversation around the advancements of analytical research, development, and application. So while all our presenters are women and gender minorities, Anyone is invited to join our community and attend our events, regardless of their gender or technical skill level. WI offers many opportunities to participate throughout the year, including by attending our annual conference, becoming a member, joining us for virtual webinars on exciting topics, and much more. So the first way you could participate is by joining us in person for our upcoming conference on July 21st through 23rd in Columbus, Ohio. This year's main theme is the analytics life cycle from start to iteration. This will be a, a theme for our main panel as well as throughout the conference. In addition, we'll have four exciting keynote presentations from speakers like Feral Ozell, Carol Willing, and Noelle Silver. We will also have five breakout tracks so each attendee can create their optimal agenda uh, tailored to their interest and their experience level. The conference also features a number of activities and enhancements. On July 21st, we're offering two workshops, Change Management with Katie Robert and Algorithmic Bias with Alex Rupsom. Um, these are high quality professional instructors and they've both taught workshops for us in the past and we've had great feedback from both of them. So for all of our DataViz enthusiasts out there, and I know you're here today, our popular DataViz competition is back for its fourth year. Right now, the top 10 entries are live on our website and the popular vote will decide which five finalists will be invited to present live on stage at the conference this year. 
So if you join us at the conference, you can cast your vote live and help us crown the 2021 DataViz champ. Um, in the next couple months, we will be opening up submissions for the 2022 DataViz competition. So if you're interested in entering, look out for that. And um, I'll send a link to, uh, to our website where you can um, keep looking out for them. We also have a career fair where attendees can network with top companies hiring data and analytics talent. Um, and finally, our team and our venue have put numerous health and safety protocols in place to ensure a safe and enjoyable environment for all of our in-person conference attendees. So if you're interested in analytics, I hope you'll join us there. Um, last year, WI also launched our membership program and it's already grown to over 1,000 members. Our platform offers a lot of exciting features like an event calendar where you can find and share events happening virtually or in your area area about analytics and data, um, a resource center where you can search, share, and learn from useful resources um, on analytics and professional development, um, and a on-demand video archive, which offers a full selection of recordings from all of our conferences, workshops, webinars, and more. The platform also offers a lot of opportunities to connect with fellow data and analytics enthusiasts uh, through discussion, chat, and much more, um, including ways where you can give back through mentorship, uh, mentor a learning group, and uh, just interact in a really fun way. Uh, you can become a basic member and join for completely free, or you can upgrade and get a more personalized experience uh, where you can participate in learning groups, you can join members only meetings with featured leaders and experts in the analytics space as guests. Um, you can get conference discounts and much more. Uh, here's a couple other ways you can get involved um, with women in analytics other than the conference and membership. So first, a great way to get involved is by attending virtual events. We offer a lot of virtual events throughout the year we can, where you can learn from experts and professionals and gain new skills, like our quarterly webinar series, workshops, um, and other events throughout the year. Uh, we, we offer an ambassador program, which is a great way you can get involved to help elevate and highlight diverse voices in the analytics space. Uh, through that, you'll help us promote upcoming events and opportunities help grow the community, and you'll also get access to quarterly ambassador meetups and exclusive discounts. Uh, the Leaders Network is a great way for leaders in the analytics and data space to connect with fellow leaders, to advance their career, and to share knowledge. You can apply to join this exclusive network for women leaders in the space uh, that provides access to opportunities to share your expertise, such as speaking at the conference, speaking at other events, leading a workshop, um, authoring an article or a book, and many more opportunities that fall under that sort of umbrella. Um, finally, if you know someone or are someone making an impact in the area of analytics, data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence, or any other relevant field, um, you, can be, you can nominate yourself or nominate them as a WIA woman to watch. So if selected, the Women to Watch will receive a complimentary conference pass and will be highlighted in a blog post. So as I mentioned earlier, self-nominations are welcome and we really appreciate them because it's important that we showcase everyone making an impact. Um, to wrap up, there's a couple ways you can get connected with WA. First of all, you can visit our website, womenanalytics.com. There's a lot of information on there. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact us at info at womenanalytics.com. Um, and if you're just interested in connect, keeping it connected with us and following along, you can follow us on social media at, at WI Community. Um, thank you for having me so much today, and I hope to see you in the WI Community in the future. Um, are there any questions? Will the July WA conference have a virtual component to it? So the actual conference will not have a virtual component, but for both of our workshops, we're offering a virtual or in-person option. So if you want to attend a workshop, 
you can um, sign up and indicate whether you'll be attending virtually or in person. And our virtual attendees will have the same support from instructors and TAs that our in-person attendees will have. Anyone else have any questions for Lauren? Looks like we have one more. Um, how can someone sign up to attend the workshop? Yeah, um, so after this today, if it's okay, I can send you some links. Um, they are also listed on our website, womeninanalytics.com. So if you go to the conference page and you scroll down, you can see where you can register for workshops. Right now, we actually are offering a discount for 20% off all of our workshops. Um, so if you let me know that you're interested, I can send you the code to sign up for that with a discount. Would you be able to share that um, in the chat? And then I can add it to. And then we have one additional question. What is the timing of the events? So I think those are all good. They're all going to be Eastern Standard Time, um, US. Yes. Yeah, um, everything is based on Eastern Standard Time. Um, I believe it begins at 8 a.m. in the morning and will go until about five each day. And after the second day, we will have sort of a happy hour um, time to meet and greet. And second day, we may also have an event that goes later, but most of them go from around 8 to 6 p.m. And then I do want to give a shout out to Julie Lox, Lax, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing her last name correctly, um, who works for Cardinal Health. She is going to be presenting at the conference as well. As well as, well as you are too, right, Erin? Correct, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? That's a fantastic lineup you all put together for this year. Yeah, we have a ton of incredible speakers coming from all around the country, some even coming from other continents uh, to speak at the conference. And the lineup is incredible. As you mentioned, we are so excited to be seeing everyone in person and hopefully be putting on a incredible event. Perfect. And then uh, Lauren, would you be able to share that code into the panelists and attendees chat? I think it's yes. on perfect. Any other questions for Lauren? Perfect. It looks like we are all good. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat um, and we can either answer them during the call or follow up with Lauren and the other members um, following this. So with that, I'll kick it over to Zach to introduce Keisha. Yeah, I would, I would love the honor of introducing Keisha. So Keisha Rose is our next presenter, going to talk all about Tableau Data Dev. Uh, she is a senior product manager at Tableau. Uh, she has one of the coolest jobs. I think she'll probably tell you a little bit about that. Um, she has interest in traveling, cooking, and playing video games. We should have talked about video games earlier, Keisha, because I think we could have spent that whole half hour with that. Uh, <laughs> without further ado, Keisha, go ahead and take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much, Zach. Let me go ahead and get my screen sharing here. There we go. All right. All right, just to confirm you guys are seeing that slide. Yep, we're all good. Awesome, great. Hi everyone, like Zach said, I'm Keisha Rose. I'm a senior product manager on the Tableau developer platform team. And before I even kick off, I would love if you could put into the chat if you have had any experience with the Tableau developer platform. Have you looked at our APIs? Have you made an extension? Maybe you've done some stuff with Tableau server and our REST API. Would love if you could just put in the chat. And if you if the answer is no, I'd love to know that as well. Then you're a data dev newbie. Want to know what I'm, who I'm talking to today. So like I mentioned, I'm a part of the Tableau developer platform team. And there's not actually one team. I just have to use that phrase to kind of cover all of the different areas of our developer platform. And as you can see from this photo from uh, our hackathon a couple of years ago, since you know we haven't had a chance to be back in person again for Tableau conference, Hopefully soon we can do that. But here I am with a bunch of our other fun 
data dev uh, Tableau employees, and that's the term to use, data dev. Those are the folks like you who also code for Tableau. So you're building extensions, you're using our APIs or our SDKs. Those are our data devs. Now, many of you might have, you have been using Tableau for building beautiful dashboards, but you might not be aware of all of the amazing things that come with the full developer Tableau platform. So let me see, I'm gonna check in on our chat and get an idea of, of what's going on in here. Okay, looks like we got some newbies. Awesome, no experience, awesome. That's, I love to hear that because that means I get to introduce you to our developer platform. I see a little teensy bit. Okay, a couple updates to server, nice. Uh, yep, yep, and Zach gave me that data dev, data dev. You've got, by the end of this, you, you'll know the call, call and, and, and call back. Um, at Tableau Conference, we have this thing where if you hear someone or you see someone and you say data dev, they have to call back to you. So if I hear, if I call to you, if I see you on the street and I say data dev, you got to call back data dev. Just so now you know, you guys are all in the end. Awesome, thanks for that information that helps me tailor my presentation. So as I said, Tableau has this amazing platform, but it comes with a bunch of tools to help you integrate and extend it and customize it. So we're gonna be going through the main areas of this platform today. We're gonna to look at automation and integration, the ways that you can automate tedious tasks or batch tasks together um, using Tableau server or other, other parts of Tableau. We'll also talk about extensibility, how you can add new capabilities to your dashboards or integrate them with other applications. I'll also talk about advanced analytics. So talking about using uh, advanced models, maybe even machine learning or Python and how you can integrate that with Tableau. We'll also talk about embedding. So that's bringing Tableau to where you're doing work or embedding Tableau dashboards into a website, a portal or SharePoint. And then of course, we'll talk about data connectivity. Tableau offers about 60 or so native data connections, but what if you need data from somewhere else? All right, so as we go through each section, please feel free to throw in a question. I'll make a pause in between each section just to see if there are any questions, but I'll also have some time at the end as well. All right. First up, the first thing we all know when starting with Tableau is you have to connect to data. So like I said, we have about 60 or so native connectors in Tableau, but what if you need to get data from somewhere else or you need to customize the way that that data is being brought into Tableau? So starting with data connectivity, we have a couple of different options for you. So like I said, this is talking about non-native data sources. A couple of great examples. You want to connect to data that's on the web, some type of web application data. They're not going to offer a database backend usually. They'll say, here's our REST API. How do I connect to that data? Great example would be something like Twitter or Workday. How do I connect to that data? Another example is a new database technology. Let's say you just started trying out the latest and greatest of, of databases. You know, it's Keisha DB just came out hot off the presses. We're not going to have a native connector for that built in Tableau yet, right? Until it gains that popularity and that, that massive scale, it's not going to be in Tableau. How do I connect to that? Or maybe you guys are doing your own in-house data sources where you've got some kind of customization. You know, it's perfectly tuned, but it's not exactly what Tableau is expecting. How do I connect to that? So we have three main uh, APIs or SDKs, which is just software development toolkits there. Uh, to connect to those things. The first one being the web data connector. This is probably the most popular. You probably have seen this one out and about. This one allows you to connect to obviously web-based data. So anything out there that's either hosted on the web, so talking about flat files, hosts on the web, or it can connect to REST APIs, SOAP APIs, OData, anything like that that's being surfaced in a HTTP format what data, what data connectors can connect to. We also have the hyper API. So you know when you're taking a extract in Tableau, it creates a hyper file. 
Well, we have an API that can allow you to create those hyperfiles. And once they're created, you can then publish them to Tableau Server. And we give you the tools to make a unique connection the exact way that you want it. So if you want to pull in different data sources or connect to that uh, data source that's not native in Tableau, you can bring that in and create your own extracts using the Hyper API. And then lastly, our newer API, about a year or so old to think about now, is our connector SDK. And that allows you to build native-like connectors. So I'm gonna show you a web data connector and the connector SDK, so you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here. All right, so let me get out of this and let's take a look at, <clears throat> excuse me, the first one I mentioned there, the web data connector. So in this list of data connections, I mentioned we've got about 60 or so, like 58 or so plus ODBC. We also have the web data connector. Now, many people get a little confused with the web data connector um, connection screen here. You do need to build a web data connector. You can't paste in a link to a data source in this link here. You need to build a web data connector. So here's one that I have built. And this one allows you to get weather data from, um, I think I'm using here for this one. Oh yeah, that at the bottom there, so it's powered by here. And what I can do is I can enter a city. So let's do uh, Columbus, hey, why not? And from here, it'll show me, yep, okay, Columbus, Ohio, good to go. And since you know we're in the United States, let's use those imperial, <laughs> imperial units and I'll hit get forecast. So I built out that whole little uh, you know, user interface I'm in the background pulling from the here API and I now have my daily and hourly forecast. And from here, it's just like any other tablet data source. I can bring in the hourly forecast here and you see that we get that data, all right? So again, works the exact same way. This one brings them in as an extract. And if I take a look here, let's see, how's it looking there in, in Columbus? Let's do that properly. Ah, not bad. Getting some 80s over there. All right. Looks good. So like I said, works just like a regular Tableau data source and you're good to go. Now, what you might have noticed when I was connecting back here to that web data connector, you see we have the installed connectors or the native connectors, if you will. And then we have these additional connectors. And so what's happening here is we're actually pulling this in from our Tableau extension gallery. And so if I open up, let's see here, let's make sure I go to the gallery page. Here you'll find a bunch of extensions, but also connectors as well. And so each of these are custom connectors built by these different database or data source uh, vendors or different companies that connect to these different data sources and they look almost just like native Tableau connectors. If I go back in here and I select, let's say the uh, Dremio connection, you can install that and it will look exactly like the same way any of these other connectors would. You'll actually see I have a test uh, connector here as well. So you don't have to wait for uh, the vendor to make your their, their custom connectors. You also can make your own. The SDK is available for anyone to build. And I have one installed here already. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you'll see it looks just like normal Tableau. You can configure all the options here, the inputs, but this is your own custom connector. And again, it would exactly work the same way as any of the other types of connectors in here. And that can work for live or extract. All right, so going back into our presentation, that was data connectivity. Now, up next, you've connected to data, right? You, you start analyzing it, you're building out your dashboards, but maybe you wanna add a little more oomph a little bit more uh, augmented data on top of things. Well, that's where we talk about advanced analytics. And here we're talking about integrating Tableau with some services or machine learning models to do all kinds of cool things. For example, if you wanna generate predictions based off of your own machine learning models, you can bring that into Tableau. You can also use it to do basic, oops, basic statistical analysis like clustering or identifying patterns. And then of course, you also can use it as a way to get live data 
as an augmentation alongside your uh, data. So for example, getting live currency exchange rates, which I'll show you an example of. Now, this can be used in two methods, um, either directly in Tableau desktop or as you're looking at the dashboard live. So like a live connection, you move things around, you move pills around, or as an end user, you click on a mark, you change a filter, and you're calling out to those advanced and local services each time, every action. Or they can be used on the data prep side in prep as a script node. So part of your prep flow, you can connect to a Python script, for example. We also uh, integrate with R and MATLAB as well. Any of those types of scripting tools you can use and bring that in. So you could say, all right, in our data prep, I'm gonna look at maybe translating all this information, right? Using some kind of translation service. Once that's done, the data source is created and we're good to go. Or if you wanna use something that's a bit more live, then you can use it in Tableau as a calculation, which I'm gonna show you right now. So I'm gonna cheat. I have my, my calculation down here. I'm just gonna copy that. And let's open up Tableau again here. And I'm just gonna to connect to Superstore for this, let's make a new worksheet. So the first thing you do is set up your and local extension uh, connection here. And I already have mine set up just because we're, you know, for the demo purposes. But once that's all set, I am now connecting to this samples, uh, this live sample that I've got created here. And I can send over any functions that I like to to that particular instance. I'm actually just using REST based technology here. It's not even Python, but you can use whatever version you like. You can use Python, R, MATLAB, or just regular old REST API uh, methods. So let's see, let's bring out our subcategory here and I'll bring out our sales. And let's say I want to convert these US dollar sales into pounds, for example. So, and I want to do that with a live updated uh, connection. So, cause of course, you know, currency exchange rates, they change frequently throughout the day. So I'll make sure I have the latest information here. I'm gonna create a calculated field. Call this nice sales for pounds. And what's happening here in this script, let me fix those quotes is that I'm calling out a particular uh, function here. Now in the service that I'm using, all I have to do is pass it the keyword, but this could be a full Python script. You could type out everything you wanted to in here if you, if you felt like it. And then after that first variable here, this first argument, everything else that I'm passing will get passed as arguments into that input. So I'm gonna pass in actually my sales here since we are looking at sales. And I'm telling it that I'm translating this from US dollars to pounds. All right, so hit apply on that. Okay, looks like we're good to go. And if I bring that out here, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take all of those sales values for each of the subcategories. And I'm now getting back those sales in pounds, right? Of course, I would normally add on the, uh, the pound symbol beforehand, but I get, think you guys get the idea. So this is happening live, right? If I go and filter, or if I were to change this to be uh, categories instead of subcategories, it's sending out the request, getting the latest exchange rate between US dollars and pounds, and it's sending that data back to Tableau. So this can even happen live, as well as you can do it within the prep flow, like I mentioned. All right, so a lot of fun things you can do with this. I think a lot of folks tend to only think about um, the more you know predictive models and machine learning, but you also can do a, a bunch of fun things with it like uh, recursive calculations. I'm sure many of you out there who have been doing calculations, sometimes you want to do something where you need to kind of loop through the data, right? And using previous value or uh, running values isn't quite what you're looking for. You can leverage you know JavaScript or Python to do those more complex calculations for you as well. So that's a fun thing to use this for too. All right, I'm going to take a quick pause just to see if there are any questions. I don't think so. I think we're, we're going along okay. But yes, as I'm going through, please let me know if you have any questions about what we're talking about or if you want you to dive into anything further. Okay, so we've brought our data in. We've added some augmented information as well, some predictive modeling or some machine learning, et cetera. And we're building our dashboard. And now I'm gonna extend that dashboard a little bit. So here we're talking about 
extensions specifically. This one I am partial to myself because I work with extensions mostly. For me, they're also the most exciting because you can do almost anything that you want to do, right? Each thing we've talked about so far kind of has this very specific goal, but extensions really opens up the possibilities. So an extension is a web application that you can then bring into a Tableau dashboard. So uh, you might've thought about embedding in the past where you're bringing Tableau into a web application. This is the other way around. We're bringing a web application into Tableau. So what kind of things can you do with that? Well, probably the most popular thing that I've heard for extensions is a write back use case. So for example, I want to make a comment on a specific mark and let other folks be able to see that comment, maybe the tooltip. You can do that with extensions. Um, perhaps I want to make an update to a record, a database, and have that data refresh in my dashboard. You can do that with an extension. Um, you can also do some custom dashboard interactivity. Uh, I've built a few extensions that you can see in the extensions gallery, and many of them are mostly for uh, custom interactions. Back before we finally released dynamic parameters, we didn't have it for a while, but we did have extensions. I built a dynamic data-driven parameter uh, example. So you can kind of customize the way that Tableau works. Tableau works with parameters, filters, and data. Uh, the third case I see quite often as well is creating new or our complicated chart types in, in uh, an extension. So for example, a Sankey diagram, can you build it in Tableau? Yes. Is it difficult to do? Yes. <laughs> but we have extensions where you can leverage things like D3 or Chart.js and actually pull that data in from your dashboard. And with just a few clicks, you have a safety diagram. So things are a bit more complex to do, or you, know, uh, you wanna make it a little bit faster or easier, you can also do with an extension as well. So let me show you a couple examples here. First up, we have um, this jungle book or image mapper extension. So here I'm taking a look at a map of Seattle, which is where I'm based. And uh, you can see you've got all these different uh, animal sightings. Uh, and I like to say that this is a, a post-apocalyptic data source, maybe you know, a few years or decades, hopefully, in the future. Um, so I definitely haven't seen any cheetahs or lions running around, but just go with it for now. Now, I could add a filter for each of these types of animals, right? They're color coded by type. And I could add a filter if I wanted to just see the lions or just see the cheetahs. Um, but perhaps I want to do something a bit more interactive. So I'm gonna add an extension and you'll see that we have that as an object down here on the dashboard pane. I'm gonna bring that in. And I used to, when I used to give this demo, I would bring in my own custom one, but we do have this one in the gallery, which I also built in here. Cause I was like, why not? You need to share this with the world. So I'll bring in the image map filter, which isn't the greatest name, but it's descriptive. And what I'm gonna do here is configure this to first use an image. So let me go ahead and select the file I want. Let's see, jungle book, there we go. All right, got this great picture of jungle animals. And then here I'm seeing the dimensions and worksheets that are in this dashboard. And of course, this is not hard coded, right? We're pulling this information in to this particular modal dialogue here. I'm gonna keep that, all right, hit okay. And I now get my picture here on the left-hand side. I can now go ahead and use these tools to draw areas on this picture. And it's going to pop up and it's going to ask me based on the inputs I gave in the configuration. I told it I'm looking at animal group. So here I can say, yep, that one's a lion. And I'll just do the cheetah just for time's sake. Okay, my drawing's not the best. So forgive that, please. <laughs> and I'll hit cheetah. And now I can actually select the faces of these animals. And you can see that I'm getting the cheetah selected here, right? Or my lions. Okay. 
Now, obviously, this is a fun example, maybe not the most practical, but it does show how you can actually read data from the uh, dashboard itself and then affect information that's on the dashboard. So you can have that two-way communication. Some examples that I've seen this actually used in production would be things like uh, mechanics. If you're looking at like a spec of a, of a plane or a car, you could actually show that spec and then you could click on a specific part versus trying to sort through a list of like 100 or 200 filter items. Or um, if you're looking at injuries, you could show like a body here and the same idea. Now, another one that's fun to look at here as well is kind of the other way around. I mentioned looking at um, writing data back to data source. So in this case, we're looking at some inventory that I have here for stock. And I'm gonna bring in our inventory management extension. So let's say we have a rule where a stock needs to be above 10 on any item at all times. Um, I can actually now that I have this extension in the dashboard, I can select a mark and say, hmm, yeah, we got to order, you know, 10 more of those chicken and fig spreads. I'll go ahead and hit submit order. And it's going to actually go in the background, do whatever it needs to do to submit that order. And oop, there it is, it refreshed the data source, and I can now see that we have enough ordered, at least you know, in back order, to make up our minimum stock. Now, this is just a sample uh, demo extension, but using your imagination, you can see that this could actually connect to your inventory management system, and it could actually send out that request to get more information or get more inventory. So just a couple quick examples there on ways that you can use extensions to interact with the dashboard in both directions to and from the dashboard. All right, keeping an eye on questions, but I think we're good so far. I'm gonna move on to automation integration. You built a beautiful dashboard. Now you're sharing it on Tableau server or Tableau online. How do you automate or integrate that content with other things? So. Here, some of the top use cases are, um, you know, doing things automatically with content. So when you're starting a, as a new user on Tableau Server, you might want to see, you know, the most popular or uh, the most certified workbooks, projects, data sources. It'd be nice if you could automatically favorite those top workbooks for any newly created user. Well, using our automation tools, you can do that. So if someone gets created a new account, new user, you can automatically favorite for them. Here are the top things you might wanna look at as they're learning and exploring Tableau Server. You might also want to set up notifications. Let's say you are the publish, uh, sorry, you are the project leader and you wanna know when anyone adds a new workbook to your project. Perhaps there's some kind of approval process or you just want to stay on top of things that are being published within your project, you can have that automatically set up to notify you in any format you like, an email, a text, a Slack notification, et cetera. And we also have tools to help you understand the content that is on Tableau Server or Tableau Online, and that's using the metadata API. So here, if you wanted to, for example, look at all of the calculated fields that have been created from a specific database column or any workbook that is using a column within a database, oftentimes we want to maybe change or deprecate a column in a table in a database and we want to make sure that we're not messing up any downstream workbooks. So we can use these APIs and these tools to say, okay, these five workbooks are using, you know, this column. We can then notify the owners of those workbooks to switch to the new column or the new table. We've got a bunch of different tools here in this category. The REST API, which also comes with a Python server client, allows you to modify, add, update all types of things in Tableau Server, whether it's the content to the settings, it has a broad uh, breadth there as well. We also have within that webhooks, which is relatively new, I think a year or so old, which allows you to be notified of events that happen on server with a REST API call. We also have the metadata API that I mentioned that allows you to look at the content that's on your Tableau server and how they all link together. And then we also have for our admins, we've got tab command as well as the newer uh, TSM Tableau server manager, which allows you to programmatically update the settings of your Tableau server. So in this case, uh, first let me show you an example of being notified 
using our webhooks. So let me go ahead and hop over here. Okay, so let's say we have this data source that is being uh, refreshed, it's an extract. And I want to be notified if something happens and the refresh fails. So what I have is I've set up a webhook within this Tableau server that anytime a data source refresh fails, it'll notify me by creating a new um, to-do item in my inbox here. So I'm using this app called Todoist. You can use anything that you like because all Tableau is gonna do is say, hey, this thing happened. Where do you want me to send the information? Um, I also have a middleman in between saying, whenever you get that information, send it over to Todoist. Okay, so let's make sure that this refresh fails. I'm going to, let's see, let's uh, change the password here. And let's test it. All right, can't connect. So if I try and refresh, it should fail on us. So go ahead and save that. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, run that refresh now. It'll hit run now. All right, it's being queued to run. And it's gonna try and run the extract. It's gonna try and connect and boom, there it is. Right in my inbox, I can now say, hey, go check on that you know, Superstore Redshift extract. It just failed. I now have this task in my inbox to go and do and I can check it out all automatically. I don't have to keep checking on the jobs tab or anything like that. I can connect this to any notification system that I like. So that would be webhooks. Now, the other thing I want to show you here is the metadata API. Now you can use the metadata API with our REST tools as well, but we also have a, a graphical interface here. So here I'm connecting that same server and I have this query for workbook calculations. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna go through all my workbooks. By the way, this is a uh, GraphQL. If you're, if you're not quite familiar with it, we have a full documentation uh, explorer over here as well to get you started. But I'm gonna go through the workbooks and the different sheets of those workbooks and the different fields within those sheets. And if it's a calculated field, go ahead and show me the formula. Otherwise, you show me the name of the field and I can run this for all the workbooks on the site that I'm currently logged into. So I'll go ahead and hit run. And I'm now gonna get for every single workbook, every single sheet, I can see the different fields. And if it's a calculated field, I also get the actual calculation, right? And I can go through and see that for all of my different workbooks and worksheets. So using this tool is a great way to see how things connect within your Tableau server or Tableau online, all sorts of Tableau online. And uh, against popular belief, you do not need to have the data management add-on to do this. Everyone can enable this on their own server. It's automatically enabled on online and anyone can use this graphic interface or using the REST API to get access to this data. So between those two, automating tasks and looking at content and integrating with other services, these are the types of things you can do with our automation APIs and SDKs. Okay, looks like, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, we've got a couple questions here. Um, is there a training program for all of this awesome data dev functionality? Uh, great question. We, we actually just finished our data dev day last month and there's a lot of recorded content. Um, I'll make sure to get that to you in the, the chat box at the end, make sure you have that link. Um, we also have a full developer program page which can go through all of the developer tools and I'll show you at the end as well. Absolutely, there's plenty of content out there to get you started. Uh, another question here, are there public API connections that people find helpful? An example would be public other API people can connect to you or, okay, or in order to help them schedule work outside. Gotcha. So yes, there are places you can find uh, public information. So let me go back to this page here. Um, if you search for Tableau Web Data Connector, oops, data connector. And you'll see we have, let me find it here, the GitHub page. So if you go to the GitHub page 
And if you see at the top, there's community connectors. Here you can find a bunch of different web data connectors built by folks in the community. Um, I think including the weather one here as well, as well as a bunch of other things too. So great place to start looking to see if you can find some that you might wanna use for the web data connector. We also have the same thing for extensions here as well. If you look for community extensions, you'll also see some fun things here too. And again, these are brought to you from the community. So they're, you know, use them as is, but a great place to look and see, um, you know, things that are helpful and publicly available. We also, of course, have the extensions gallery too at extensiongallery.tableau.com. And here you can find the connectors I mentioned earlier, those connector SDK plugins, as well as dashboard extensions that are built by different uh, vendors and developers here too. And these ones go through a, a vetting process and they sign legal agreements and all that fun stuff. So this is a great place to look and see if you can find things that might be useful for you too. Okay, let's see. Is there overlap between creating our own extensions in Tableau with the ones that can be created in TCRM? Uh, I'm not sure. That's a great question. I'm not very familiar with TCRM and their extensions, but if I was to guess, I'd say that they are probably very different, but they might have similar um, development bases. So for example, the extensions API is just a web application, right? You're just using a web application, it's just JavaScript. If TCRM has something similar, then I'm sure you could probably uh, use that same code base and just make a few tweaks to make them work between them. But again, I'm not very familiar with TCRM, so I'm not too sure on that one. All right, so hopping in to our last section here, and that's embedding. So we already talked about bringing web applications into Tableau. This is the opposite, bringing Tableau into other web applications. So here, a great example would be if you want to create your own custom browsing experience. You maybe have a company portal, or perhaps you are a company that has an external service and you want to provide analytics to your customers, right? You can use Tableau and embed that directly into your web app. Using the REST API and the JavaScript embedding API, you're able to customize the look and feel. So it's, let's say you wanna maybe change the way some of the filtering or some of the operations work in Tableau. You can make your own custom frame around Tableau. And I'll show you an example of what that looks like in a moment. And you can also, of course, bring this into your own internal portals, or for example, bringing it into Salesforce. If you use Salesforce for your uh, sales motions, you can bring that into something like that as well, or other similar tools as well. There's no limits. So for embedding, I'm gonna show you, there we go. Couple great examples here. Um, can take a look at this is the KPMG uh, automotive every year I think they do like a, a whole review on uh, different industries right so this is their overall industry review and as a part of it you can see that they have Tableau dashboards embedded directly in so it's using those same key colors it's embedded directly into their website and you can start to interact with it just like you normally would with any Tableau dashboard Another great example of Tableau in the wild is Redfin, their news data center. They've got a lot of data about the housing market. Um, recently, more information about how COVID is affecting that housing market. And all of this is also done in Tableau as well. So again, you get that same interactivity that you normally would with the Tableau dashboard, and you're just bringing it directly in line with your website. Finally, we have a new embedded portal within Tableau as well at embedded.tableau.com. Here you can take a look at a few examples. So I'm gonna click on this financial services one. Let's go ahead and close that. Here we've got a really just fake website, but just to show you an example of how you could do this, I'm gonna log in as one of these users. And here we can see we've got firstly, uh, little widgets, and this is Tableau, right? These little things are just Tableau. It's kind of like the, the dashboard page, if you will, right? The main things you want to look at. This is again right here, Tableau as well. We've got some Twitter feeds, et cetera. So you can kind of integrate it directly into your web page. We also have as well a bit more uh, fuller 
dashboards, and these are being brought in from Tableau Server. So using the REST API, you can see who's logged in to your website and see, okay, what information, what dashboards do they have access to? Pull the names, pull the thumbnail images, and create your own custom and local portal for your, your clients, your customers, your end users, whoever. From here, I can select a dashboard to look at. And again, I get that here fully in my web page. It's all seamlessly integrated. I also have these buttons on the top. And these buttons here are not a part of the Tableau dashboard. These are customized for the web page. So yeah, their own custom look and feel, right? I can click on these buttons and it'll interact with the Tableau dashboard. Okay, so wrapping up here, um, I've gone through each of those different areas of our uh, developer platform. At this point, I can only implore you to join our developer program. If you're interested in learning more about how you can integrate some of these tools and APIs into what you're doing with Tableau, go to developer.tableau.com. There you can not only sign up for the developer program, you can also find more information about each of these different development tools and get a, a breakdown of their documentation, use cases, examples, et cetera. Um, and when you sign up for the developer program, you not only will get notified of new things that are happening in the Tableau developer platform world, but you'll also get access to your own free sandbox site. So as a developer, you can sign up for a sandbox site where you have, I think, three users on that online site, and you can actually try out and practice some of these things. You know, before you go off and launch your, uh, project deleting or your workbook cleanup script, maybe you try it out on your sandbox site before you accidentally go and delete things in your production site. So it's a great way to get access to that. So you have a free place to play around and learn about these developer tools. You'll also be invited to our sprint demos. At the end of each month, we have the developers and engineers uh, and product managers from our teams, and they show off the things that are coming up soon. So if you want to know if we're adding a new feature or you know some new API that's coming up soon, you can be at the forefront and get access to that information by joining us on those sprint demos. But only if you sign up for the developer program. Now, someone had mentioned, uh, I'd asked earlier, you know, is there a training program or is there something to start? Um, we recently set up these mini challenges for developer or data dev bingo, if you will. And I actually have this page open. I'm gonna go ahead and open that page up for you guys. So this is what we call data dev bingo. And what it is, is a series of mini challenges. And by completing each of these challenges, you cross off a square on the bingo card. And the challenges are from all varying levels. So for example, starting in the B column here, we've got learn the basics of embedding. This one's very straightforward. You can just follow along with the JavaScript API tutorial and mark off a box for yourself on that B. And it goes through a bunch of fun examples, small projects to get you started from, like I said, very simple or to this one, create a write back extension. So it's a full breadth of things to kind of help you get started because as much as the documentation might help, I think having these um, mini challenges is a great way to just kind of get your inspiration flowing, right? Thinking about how can you use these tools once you're familiar with them. So between that and of course, developer.tableau.com, Right here again, you can find the program and join up for it as well. And you can find a bunch of support and tools and resources here as well. All right, that concludes my presentation. At this point, I think I had seen a couple of questions earlier, but if you have any additional questions, feel free to throw them into the chat or uh, the Q&A and I'll gladly answer them for you. Let me see. I think I got all of them. So far, it looks like all of them have been answered. Do you have any more for Keisha? Perfect. With that, we'll right. turn it over to Zach to talk about the next section. Awesome. Thanks, Keisha. That was great. Uh, 
Yes, for everybody. So I'm also part of the data dev program from a user perspective. I'm part of the ambassador group and I can say Keisha and team do a great job with just at large everything that she just showed. So there's so much power that you can get from the APIs that definitely just take a look and I'll actually be showing a little bit in my presentation about um, the specific like benefits of joining that program because I'll be using the free online test site that you get along the way. So let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. So uh, real quick, before I get started, uh, we moved things around just a little bit today. So the learn from your peers, if you haven't joined us in, in the past, is basically your opportunity to bring up questions, talk about things you're working on, just have an open chat. So we're pushing that to the back end of today. So if you have questions or have things or want to think about it while I'm talking and rambling on about server, now's your opportunity to plan for that in the last 10 minutes so you're not surprised. That said, let me go ahead and start the second part of your technical primer with Tableau today. So that's not the right screen. Hold on one second. Let me just switch screens. It's presenting from the wrong one. One second. Alrighty. So everything about Tableau Server. So for the next, uh, what is it, about odd 45 odd minutes or so, uh, I'm going to be talking about Tableau Server, not just a little bit, but literally everything. Uh, so we'll go through basically some fundamentals. We'll work our way up. So if you don't know anything about Tableau Server, you just use Tableau Desktop. If you're an expert on Tableau Server and you know everything about it, or you're somewhere in the middle, I think that you'll learn something along the way. But we'll start out with the basics and move our way to the more advanced topics through the next 45 minutes. So my name is Zach Geis. I already talked about that. Uh, a little bit more about me. So I'm the Tableau COE leader for JP Morgan Chase. So not only do I work with servers and the data dev things that Tisha just went over, I pretty much do everything that has to do with Tableau at Chase. So when it comes to automating things, training, enabling the server, packaging the desktop, making sure drivers work, uh, basically everything from end to end works with my team at Chase. Uh, today we've got about 130,000 users that we support. So my kind of gambit of things is everything with Tableau, but I do have a very special place in my heart for the technical side, the server side. That's kind of where I started. I really like Tableau server. And I'm going to talk about that specifically. Uh, you can see I've got my Twitter handle and my email up. So feel free, reach out anytime. I'd be happy to talk about whatever you want to talk about. I'm certified in both desktop and server. And I'm also, as I mentioned, a Tableau ambassador for the data dev group of uh, users. Here's a little bit of a smattering of some of my, my uh, actual design work in Tableau desktop. I, I show this only because there's kind of this thinking of you're one or the other. You're somebody that works on the technical side, the server side, the API side, or you're an analyst, you're a designer, you're somebody building things in, in Tableau. I don't really subscribe to that. I think you can go either direction. So if you feel like you're more on the desktop side and server's confusing, APIs are confusing, it doesn't have to be that way. You can learn it and it's something that's really easy to do. So let's start off with what is Tableau Server? So Tableau Server is how you share content. Uh, a lot of you probably have seen server in one, one uh, way, shape, or form. Uh, for example, you've probably seen Tableau Public, uh, where we have all these public dashboards that you can see. That's just a giant version of Tableau Server. Uh, this just allows you to share with others, give them a URL for the components. It has a lot of built-in options for scheduling and adding security and alerts and things like that. Uh, that's pretty much what we're looking at. So. Before I go into a little bit more, I'm going to actually open up Tableau and I'm going to publish. So this over here is actually Tableau server. This is a instance of Tableau online. And this is the free instance of Tableau online that you get for signing up at the developer program for Tableau. So if nothing else, of all the great things that Keisha mentioned that you get from this, you get somewhere that you can play. You get somewhere that you can play with the new features. So if you look at this, uh, we actually check the version that we've got right now. This is as recent as you get. 
2021.2. You can't even get that on a server yet. So you can always see the newest things that are out there. You can see all the newest features. You can integrate with your APIs and test things and actually play with all the settings. Uh, but that's one of the best things. You just get your own little sandbox to check all the things. No limitations, all the features. So I'm going to publish here. So to publish, if you've never done this before, basically we just want to make sure that we've got the URL that we're publishing to. And we flip over to our handy dandy desktop tool. So I'm going to hit publish workbook. I'm going to make sure that I'm logging into the server. I'm going to hit connect. It's going to prompt me and I'm going to hopefully remember my information. No promises with that. Hit sign in. And it's going to go ahead and authenticate me so that I can go ahead and publish. So We'll give it just a second. It comes up with a publishing dialog. So this is where you can detail how you want to publish things. You can refine it a little bit. So I can pick the projects. If I got multiple projects. We'll go over what projects are. I can give it a specific name, add some tags for searching, uh, pick which sheets I want to actually provide for the users to see, modify some permissions if I have access to do that, check my data sources, other things like that. And then I'm just going to hit publish. I'm going to overwrite it. Tableau is going to do its magic and it's going to flip over and give me a preview from the browser. And it's that simple. So we've now got this bad boy published up to the server. We can check it out. We can give out the URL to others and it's no longer this local file. Now, like I said, we're very basic right now. You probably know this, but in case you haven't, it's that easy to get something to the server from Tableau Desktop. Let's flip over back to the PowerPoint. Let's talk a little bit because there are different types of Tableau server. So on-premises, on-premises is a traditional server that you're going to actually have like your team, your administrative team host inside of your company. So these are actual machines on a rack sitting somewhere that you're installing Tableau server on. The benefit and sometimes not the benefit of that is it's all on you. It's up to you to keep them managed, keep them secure, keep them updated, keep them running. Um, and if there's issues, it's really up to you. Now, the alternative option of that is Tableau Online. Tableau Online is very much the same. However, it's hosted by Tableau on your behalf. So you're going to get uh, basically installed into an instance of their Tableau on Online. Uh, cloud instance, and it's going to look something like this. Benefits of this is you don't have to worry about all those things. It's going to be maintenance and updated and upgraded, and all those kind of advantages will be off of you. You won't have to worry about those. Some features can be a little bit limiting when you want to go to the online route, but if you want a frictionless, easy, self-service, open and, uh, environment, Tableau Online is probably going to be your best route. Now, some alternative options to that, we have Tableau Public. If you never went to public.tableau.com, this is essentially just a free and open version of Tableau uh, online. So you can go there, you can publish anything, anybody can access it. It's completely unrestricted, unrestricted and open and just available for anybody to use. So good thing if you just wanna just try out Tableau and just see how it works and see some of the features with it. And, also, I kind of put this in here is you can do things in cloud. So if you're interested in where, you know, the world is going with cloud and even containerized de delivery, that's options with Tableau as well. So it doesn't necessarily have to be physical. I can sit in things like at AWS so that you can give people the, uh, all the advantages of cloud. Uh, there are two different license models, uh, mostly and pretty much always you're going to be pushed to the user-based uh, option now. So user is licensing your user. So you're going to have unlimited machine power. You're going to be able to basically throw all the machines that you want at your users, but you're going to pay for the user set themselves. So this is a, a subscription model. Core base is a little bit different. It's a little bit more old fashioned and specifically more for open use cases that are going to be for hundreds of thousands of users. Uh, this is when you're going to pay for the amount of machine as opposed to the users. Again, not typically used anymore, but those are the two options there. 
Now within Tableau, there's a lot of different objects types. Uh, you're gonna have workbooks. Those are the actual objects that you have that you publish to Tableau. You know, I just showed you an example of a Tableau workbook. You're gonna have the data sources. Those are the data things that uh, data sources that your Tableau workbook connects to. Um, those you probably know if you use Tableau desktop. The things that are a little bit more specific to Tableau server are sites, basically a wall of content. So if you ever wanted to have, for example, a complete wall between your content and HR and all your other users, site is a good way to basically enforce that as kind of the highest level that you can cut things within a server. Now, something that's a little bit softer that, than that is a project. These are more like folders so that you want to organize content, maybe delineate access based on those folders. Uh, projects work really well with that. And up, up uh, if you, as long as you have about, I think, 10.3 in PASH, you can use sub projects as well if you want to even just cut that down further and further. Schedules and tasks. So you're going to use schedules to uh, refresh things, put them on a schedule. So uh, if, it, if it was something that was actually connected to a database, when I published that, it would have given me an option to refresh on a schedule, pick a schedule. So 10 a.m. Uh, every day or every two hours, things like that. Those are all schedules. You have options to put things on. Uh, the tasks themselves are the events. So something is refreshing, a subscription is being generated, a, um, a you know, a uh, alert is being generated, things like that. And then of course, users and groups. So user is a named user that has access and they're put into typically groups that then are used to actually identify access. For example, Active Directory groups. When you go to Tableau Server, you get this whole little gambit of different options uh, within the toolbar. So this is something, of course, you don't get in desktop, but it's really nice to have this in Tableau Server because it gives you more options than you would typically have. So um, you can interact and use undo, redo, revert settings to set to the initial state, undo things that you're doing, refresh the data if you think it's live and there's some things that you want to actually gather from that, pause the refresh, things uh, just to make sure that you don't receive new refreshes, um, new data. And the right side is a little bit more complex and has more um, fleshed out features. So uh, the ability to save a custom view. So if you wanted to say, you know what, this is great. I, I, I'm fine with seeing everything. But honestly, for me, I want to see East and I want to see Ohio selected. I can then save this custom view and say Ohio, save it, make it my custom, my default. And then when I open it, it gives me this as an option to actually see it by default or just update to that. So good option, especially when you have a lot of filters and you don't every time you refresh a view, want to change that list of filters every time. Alerts, uh, these basically allow you to set an alert based on a threshold. Uh, these are based on axes. So if I click on this axis over here on the furniture, I can hit create. And I can basically say, send me an email if this ever goes above 30K. Um, I can give it a name, I can actually set other recipients, and then everybody that's listed there is going to get an email if that number ever goes above 30k. So really nice feature to have there. Metrics is pretty new. So this allows you to follow a specific value and metric as it changes and evolves over time. So if I'm curious specifically to see as a user, I don't really care maybe about the whole dashboard, but I want to see what happens with sales on the furniture level, I can actually subscribe to that, create this, and then have that in as a saved metric that I can follow going forward. I can actually see this value as opposed to the whole dashboard. Subscribe, pretty simple here. This allows me to subscribe to the dashboard if I wanted to see a daily uh, email to myself that has a, a rendering of the dashboard that I can click through to see the interactive version, I can do that. I can set different schedules for this send it in a PDF, different options in there. Edit, yeah, I think that's pretty obvious. I'm going to go into web edit and I'm actually going to modify the dashboard. If I want to share with people, I can actually give the name right here and it's going to send them a note that just says, hey, this has been shared with you. I can download the file. I can have kind of a narrative and add comments and you know say, hey, Keisha, what's going on with this? So I could type something like that and just actually have something as far as like an actual conversation on the data and full screen, I'm sure that is very confusing what that does. So something that can get a little bit confusing is when you actually start to talk about roles. 
So everybody isn't the same when it comes to Tableau. Uh, they're, they're split between three different license types, the creator, the explorer, and the viewer. And we'll start with viewer. So a viewer license is, you're gonna be a traditional user. You can go to a dashboard. You could interact with a lot of the, most of the things that I just said in the toolbar. I can change filters, things like that, but not much else. With an explorer, this gets a little bit higher level. So a general explorer can do all the things a viewer can do, but a little bit more. So they can download all of the data and they can actually do web authoring. If you wanna give your users the ability to do web authoring and, and create their own dashboards or modify dashboards on the web, this allows them to do that. Um, it, it's also right now required to use ASCII data, which I'll go into a little bit further, but that is actually changing soon. Uh, explorers can publish. This is another role where you can actually allow them to publish or not. Uh, if you want them to just modify versus actually save new content. And then site admin, which we'll go into more with the creator side, is the ability to actually manage a site, manage that whole instance within the server, and have has the ability to kind of modify things along with that. Now, creator is somebody with Tableau Desktop. They have all the things that Explorer and a viewer can do, but they also get Tableau Desktop, they get Tableau Prep, and they can use the actual physical versions of those as well. And then site admin, I mentioned that this is unrestricted site access where I can modify my site. Server admin is then cut above where I can manage all sites. I can change server settings. Um, usually at the same time, I can use things like TSM and other things like that that I'll go into a little bit down the road. Permissions, everything can be adjusted when it comes to the permissions of the content. If I wanna give certain people access to do certain things with certain content, uh, that's where permissions come into play. So I can basically go in here, pick groups, pick users, and actually modify what they can do with workbooks, what they can do with data sources and roles and projects and all those different things, turn on and off different things like the ability to view things or to filter or the ability to see the data. Now, permissions can be a little confusing because there is the ability to turn on, turn off, and inherit. So this is a handy little chart that I usually share with people because I think it's really easy to use, which just explains how it works as far as permissions. So you're going to start on the left, and you're going to basically say, is the capability outside of the scope of the site role? So I'm an explorer. Can I do this? Um, so if I can, and I kind of ver verbalize that differently. If I can't do it, I can, it's going to go over to denied. If I can, it's going to go to, am I an admin or a project leader? Yes, I can do it. If no, check the next thing. Do I own the content? This is always kind of a weird thing with Tableau is if I own something, I get special privileges. If I do, yes, I can do it. If I, if I don't own it, let's check the next thing. Am I denied as a user? Did somebody actually go to my user role inside of, or user uh, persona inside of the server and actually deny something? Uh, okay, I can't do it. No, all right, let's check. Am I allowed specifically as a user? Then yes, and just keeps kind of going through there. I won't keep just going through all the steps, but it's all about whether it's inherited, denied, or uh, specifically allowed. So we'll go into some of the other random things that you can do with Tableau. For example, one is Tableau Mobile. Tableau does have uh, applications and apps for your phone for both iOS and, and, um, and uh, Android. Couldn't think of that. Um, there's also integration with BlackBerry if you're a company that uses that. And there's just a lot of things that come with this. So it's uh, automatically going to use the mobile friendly layout if that's what you said in Tableau Desktop. It's going to have a nuanced, specific uh, design that is for, for mobile for the application itself. And other things like uh, viewing things offline, other things like that, there's some special features that come along with that. Um, ask data is another thing. So I mentioned this briefly. So with ask data, this just allows you to go into a data source. We'll just back out a little bit. I'll go into my data sources, pick one. I've got my superstore right here. Um, when you go into a data source and you have the privileges, the first thing it's gonna do is something like this and actually go to ask data. Now, ask data just uh, interprets your data and provides a uh, natural language way to ask questions. So I can go in here and say, do, do, do you know, here are my customer names. Um, I'll just go to, sorry, give me one second. 
that was embedded in the workbook, so not a good example. Uh, so when this comes up, it allows me to naturally ask questions. So if I had superstore data that was actually working there, I could say, how much is my total sales in the West? Tableau is going to understand that. It's actually going to build a simple chart that visualizes what my sales are in the West. Then I can take that and go into a next level and actually build a workbook off of that and start to ask questions more naturally. So having a little bit of issues here. It's a demo. It happens. Uh, but this is just really the whole facet of Ask Data. It's something to keep an eye out because it is evolving a lot over time. So a lot that's going into the 2022, uh, 2021.2 version that just is releasing very soon. Um, and throughout the next year or so, there's a lot of enhancements, um, integration in, with uh, an, an API and things like that. They're really going to just I think it makes this even more accessible. The other big thing is it's changing. So it was Explorer only, which is a little bit more costly. It's moving to a viewer approved thing um, here in the near future as well. Tableau Prep Conductor is another piece. So I'll talk about the add-ons as we move forward, but Tableau Prep Conductor allows you to schedule your workflows and your actual data flows within Tableau Prep on the browser. So as opposed to running them locally, you can put them on the browser, schedule them and have them run just like your other jobs that you have on the server. Uh, TSM is another important component of Tableau, especially from an administrative uh, responsibility side. So this allows you to actually check what uh, your different servers are doing, what processes they're handling and modify them somewhat on the fly here as well. Um, you know, Keisha mentioned there's even a TSM API where you can call some of the same things programmatically. Um, there is a command line version of this. It's a very robust way to monitor and manage your Tableau server instance. Uh, there are currently two major add-ons for Tableau server. So the, the first of which is your data management add-on. So that's going to come with two things. That is your um, prep uh, conductor so that you can schedule things with Tableau prep. And it's going to come with the data catalog. So the data catalog is kind of a visual add-on to what Keisha showed with the, um, the, ca the cataloging, the data, forgetting the, the API right now, but I'll, I'll get to it. The catalog features will actually be visualized on your Tableau server. So you can actually see the things like if a field was disrupted or disconnected, how is that gonna flow through? So you can see those kind of things as well. The metadata API just came back to me as what I was talking about. Um, the other part of that, the other side of the coin is another add-on, which is your um, Tableau server management add-on. So this allows you to actually see resources. So you can actually see your resources uh, for utilization of your CPUs, your memory, things like that, and go in, in a little bit deeper, connect to the logs, things like that. Um, it comes with some other things like the deployment tool if you want to have deployments between servers. It comes with uh, the ability to disconnect your file store if you want to go to AWS and things like that. Uh, there's a lot that comes with that. So server management add-on, uh, data management add-on. Uh, so I kind of had those two different places. Um, so these are the two screenshots, resource and content migration tool. These are your catalog, uh, catalog and uh, the, your prep conductor stuff. Uh, Tableau also has a lot when it comes to even just the status screens. So as an admin or even just a side admin, you can always see what's happening within your Tableau environment by just going to the site status screens. You can see a lot of things here. You can see uh, different and, uh, dashboards that have been built so that you can see things like stale content, who's using S data, what are the background tasks. Uh, there's even some new things up here. You'll see admin, admin insights for certain things. Um, there's logs as well in here. This just gives you the ability to see a little bit more of what's going on. So here's two examples. If you want to see the extracts that are running, you can actually uh, like quickly view what's running, whether they fail, whether they succeeded, how long they ran. You can see here's the performance view, how long things um, take to render for users over time and by project and things like that. So Lots of good information in there. And if you don't get the things that you want inside of the status screens, you can actually build your own. 
So the Postgres repository. So this is sits behind every single Tableau server instance. And this gives you a lot of information about what is happening and what is available inside of your Tableau, uh, your Tableau server instance. So you can connect to this and see who are my users, uh, what is the performance, uh, what are the actions that my users taken, uh, how long have been, things been sitting, how big are they, are they running, are they failing, uh, you know, what groups are there, who's in what groups, like there's a million different things that you can answer when it comes to Postgres repository. So. Uh, very simple. It's as simple as making activating it with a command, and then you can connect to it with uh, Tableau Desktop, and even publish those dashboards, put them back on the server, and you've got it. Kind of got a full circular effect right there. Uh, when it comes to the dashboards themselves, there's two ways to render them. You can go server side to client side. Um, depending on how you set this up on your server, it's going to default to one or the other. Um, this is a good thing if you ever see notice that. For example, certain dashboards are running slower, certain dashboards are running slower for certain people or for certain um, you know, locations. It's good to actually test your dashboard with these little URL parameters at the end, uh, because depending on whether it's being, uh, the work is being done by the client, your browser or the server itself, it could actually it give you a different experience based on the two. Let me check, I haven't checked my Q&A for a while, so let me check that real quick. I think I've got a couple questions I've been ignoring. Keisha did a much better job with that than I did. All right. Yeah, so uh, let's go back a couple times, uh, a couple, uh, maybe like 10 pages to when we had a question. Uh, so user roles, so one of the questions I got here, can you clarify the difference between side admin, side admin explorer? Um, so a side admin explorer, uh, it, uh, so you can't connect to external data in web authoring. So when you go into web authoring, um, based on your role, if you're an explorer versus a regular site admin, you can connect to brand new data sources. With the site admin explorer, they only have the ability to connect to things that are already sitting there. So it's, there's not a lot of nuance between the two aside from that. Um, I think there was uh, I some marks I do in order to refresh the data source, they can't like, explore can publish. Um, yeah, yeah. So it definitely it could depend on how those those data sources were set and whether they were the owner. If you look back at that permission tree of like, can they do this versus that versus that? Uh, so answer that live. Uh, another question, do you recall, recall where the magical threshold for rendering complexity is set? Uh, so we could definitely go into a little bit more detail. So this is the question that I was or the slide I was just talking about. So rendering modes. So there is actually a number that is used for whether it's done on the server side versus the client side. Um, offhand, I don't remember it. I think it's set somewhere, I want to say like 120, something kind of weird like that. But there's a lot of math that goes into that that, I'll be honest, isn't really published or really well known, especially outside of Tableau. So um, it, it, there, there's some reading that you can do on that, but it's a little bit difficult to find the nuances of exactly how that's set. Um, but you can actually, there is an option to actually per, um, impersonate a number in here rather than just rendering false or rendering true. You actually say render at this value. And essentially, essentially all that means is there's a specific number where it flips. Usually you're going to have things that are done at the server side. At a certain number, they're going to flip to client side. So at a certain point, the server is going to say, this is too much. I have too much going on. Make the end user's computer, if possible, render there. All right. So answered those. But I think we also maybe have some questions in chat. Let me flip those over as well. No design tips workbook. No design tips workbook today. Uh, apologies for that. Today it's server, but uh, you know next time I'll try and uh, spice it up a little bit. Uh, do do do. No design workbook. Can we play through? Make it more. Sometimes later session. Great idea. All right. Yeah. So so definitely. So Aaron's already got on that. So there's definitely some some opportunities to involve you guys because I don't really like to just sit here and ramble as well. Um, I get a little bored myself just going through some of this dry material. So. We'll think about that going forward. So um, open source tools, next topic. And I am watching the chat now. So we'll make sure that I've got those. So some of these open source tools, we're getting more and more advanced as we go. So if you are somebody that works in a server admin type of role, 
or you work with those server admins, or specifically, you just want to know more about what's going on with Tableau and your users and your performance, these tools are going to be good for you. So LogShark is a tool that is specifically used to uh, connect to interpret Tableau logs. So this is really good if you want more than you usually could. So if you connect to, for example, Postgres, it's going to have a lot of data. I already talked about that. What it's not going to tell you is it's not going to tell you that there's a error against your BizQL process that you know has was that happened three out of four times. It's not going to tell you that. It's not going to tell you the exact performance thresholds. It's not going to tell you all the errors that are happening when people load. Like for example, if I open a workbook and you in Tableau Server and you get a really random thing that says session ID is down or something like that, it's not going to tell you that. This allows you to to actually pull through those logs and interpret them in a more readable fashion. So it's really used to what comes with a dashboard like this, where you can see BizQL errors and things like that. It's something, if you really want to know more, it's a good way to, to do that. And this is something you could also connect to Splunk, for example, other things like that to ingest those logs and just learn more about what's happening in the Tableau server. Tabjolt. So Tabjolt is something that's actually a simulation of load for your server. So if you wanted to, for example, build a new server, look at your two servers side by side and see if your new server can keep up with the load from your old one, you can actually put Tabjolt onto a server, point it at the new server and just say, hey, impersonate 20 users clicking on this once every five seconds for the next hour and see what happens. This is really good, especially to just simulate load and you know play with your, your expectations of new servers, new environments. Changes is another example. If you want to upgrade and you have one server that's on 2020 versus 2021, you want to see how they, they behave, something else you can use that for. Tabmod is a little bit more Windows specific. So um, this has, the screenshot I've got here is more about logins, but this actually allows you to connect to some uh, some specific information that is about your, your server itself, the Windows uh, server that Tableau is sitting on and see you know the logins that's happening there, the load that's happening there, the CPU utilization, things like that. Just goes a little bit heavier into those details than, than some of the other tools I've talked about. Um, Scout is another one if you specifically want to look at one workbook. So let's say, what is this one workbook going to look like here? What is it going to look like here? Is it going to behave the same? Is it going to run the same? Is the performance going to be the same? Am I going to have issues in one versus the other? It's just kind of a, a apples to apples kind of testing for uh, a workbook. I don't think I need to go over this. So Keisha went through the Tableau Data Dev uh, Developer Program. Uh, it's awesome. Check it out. I think the links are in there. Uh, just make sure that uh, if you go out of the session with one thing, it is to sign up for this program. It's really a good program. You're going to get a lot out of it. All right. Um, again, not much I can say here. So I think the examples that Keisha had were better than a couple of blurbs here. So we'll skip that. And we'll go into architecture. So uh, this is something that's, that's kind of weird. I, I get excited about this. I like talking about server architecture. This is a fun thing is just playing with the processes. I can say most people don't share in that enthusiasm, but I do really like this. So um, this is kind of the different things that are happening on Tableau. If you really were to take them and simplify them and cut them down to one image, this is a good way to think of it. So you've got different tiers of things that are happening. You've got the gateway, the thing that's actually handling the intake of the process or the load of the user, um, the session. You've got the user tier. So Viz Portal, VizQL, um, data server, ask data, meta, meta, metadata servers. The big one that you want to call out here is VizQL. VizQL is the one that's actually loading things to the browser and actually, actually visualizing your dashboard. So VizQL is very important. You always want that to be up. You always want it to have as much um, you know, computing power as you can uh, allocated to it so that you can ensure that your users have a good, uh, good uh, experience with Tableau. Uh, management tier, data engine, backgrounder, prep protector, all these other things. Backgrounder, another big uh, crucial thing. So this is what runs your jobs and whether you have a data extract refresh you have a scheduled job to happen, a schedule sent to someone, an alert, uh, subscription, all those kind of things, backgrounder. And, and those are, uh, you know, they're single threaded. So there's only so much you can do. So you have to kind of ramp those up based on what you need. Repository, we've talked about that. File store is your actual copy of your files on the servers. And you can actually allocate 
how many of these processes you have on the different servers. So for example, this has, this is a three server cluster and you can see that things are kind of distributed in different ways. Uh, for example, this one I mentioned this QL node one is a heavy VizQL server. It's got four instances of that. So it's going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting for the rendering of the dashboards. Um, we've got it also doing search and browse. Honestly, if I look at this example, which I pulled from online, there's probably too much happening on node one. I'd be a little bit worried about it, but that's neither here nor there. So, you know, looking at other things, backgrounder, we've got this kind of flipped across three different nodes running a lot of those jobs. Um, and you can see there's a lot of different things here. So this is something, it's all trial and error. It all depends on your machine specs and things like that, but you can play around with where you allocate these processes. And again, if anybody wants to talk about these in more detail, this is something that uh, it does interest me. I like to talk about So You can set Tableau to be highly available. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it, there's a lot that goes into that. You're typically gonna have three nodes plus. Uh, so you're gonna make sure that you have a active and passive repository. Um, a lot of times you're going to have active servers and uh, passive servers, unless you do have something like a load balancer on top, and this is where we can get a little bit more nitty gritty, but this is just an example of, you know, how you could set something up to be externally, uh, or sorry, highly available so that if a server goes down, your users don't go down with it, your content doesn't go down, you can keep them in, uh, using your servers and make sure that everybody's up and good. Well, the last things I got here is uh, new things. So, I try to keep it just about the last year. I'm realizing I've got 2020 down there, so that should be 2021. But 2020, uh, we came out with Viz animations, play buttons, uh, new permission changes, LBLM, so login-based license management, where you can actually have a central service to license your servers, uh, sorry, your desktop users. Uh, 2020.2 came out with metrics, which I showed earlier. You can upload workbooks from the web. No longer do you have to go to desktop or use an API. New admin views. 2020.3, uh, there's new uh, subscription runs for extracts. Uh, there's a shared with me tab, just to kind of a change. A grant license on sign on option where you can have the license actually delivered to somebody based on when they sign on. 2020.4, we've got prep coming into the browser. You know, it's something I think about when it comes to, to load uh, and, and resources. Uh, resource monitoring tool for Linux. Uh, we've got faster server backups. And then 2021.1, we came out with a unified notification experience. So you have one place for all your notifications. You've got device designer that comes into web authoring and play now. Um, you can make license changes with zero downtime, big time saver uh, for a lot of people. And uh, last thing I've got here is useful links. So Tableau GitHub, this is something to check out. Um, if you want to see some of those, like the add-ons that I mentioned earlier, some code examples. It's also good if you want to see some of the API stuff that Keisha had mentioned earlier. Tableau Blueprint um, is a good um, thing that you should check out. It's, it's mostly about data at, in your organization and actually using data and, and making sure that everybody is like um, informed by data. But there's a lot of things in there that are about server as well and how you should establish that and how it's not just about data-driven culture, it's about your servers and how you plan those accordingly as well. And then of course, the data dev program, which has been mentioned a couple of times, tableau.com slash developer. Now, as I mentioned, I know that's dry. I know that's a lot of material. Uh, my my throat's dry. I want to stop for a second and see if anybody has questions about anything about Tableau Server that I can answer before we open it up for kind of a general chat. Don't be shy. You got time. I had the ability I would call on you too. I do this in my own, in my work. When, when people don't ask questions and we just have this, this kind of silence here, I just start calling on people. I'm not gonna do that here because you know, I don't even, I don't see the names, but I need at least one question. We just want one to validate me, one question. And if nobody asks, it's gotta be Aaron. Aaron has to ask the question. All right, let's look. For someone, it looks like we have someone from Tableau. Does Tableau have any questions? Or I might even just call on someone random. Do it, do it. Let's call on people. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Bill Spice. Oh, perfect. We got one. Does yes. Tableau support client versus server rendering testing? 
it looks like we have two people that saved everyone. So <laughs> we will good answer job, that. folks. Um, um, that's actually a good question. I don't know that. Uh, so, so you can program the URL itself. Um, I know that you can supplement some parameters inside of the URL. I haven't specifically checked that. I'm going to assume that you can. And if you don't hear from me, the answer is yes, you can, but I'm going to double check. And if it's a no, I'm going to come back to you and let you know. Perfect. Um, the next one is our server crashed and it was a bummer. How do we prevent that? Oh, man. That's, yeah, a, that's, that's a very not... loaded question. Um, yeah. There's a lot of things that could cause a server to crash. Um, I would recommend actually opening a support case with the Tableau customer support or support reps, and they'll be able to identify what caused your server, server to crash and to make sure that you have all of the correct information set up um, to prevent that from happening in the future if it is a setting or something that you have currently configured. Yeah, a little bit that I add to that is Tableau couldn't help so much. Um, you know, Tableau is patching frequently. Always make sure as much as you can you're on the latest patch of whatever version you're on, even if you're not doing a giant actual dot release. Um, that's always important. Use the monitoring tools that are there to isolate what's happening. Um, you know, make sure that you're monitoring what people are doing with Tableau because it's rare, but you can have an errant process or workbook bring down a server. It's happened. We have at Chase some of the biggest servers in the world. I've been brought down by users that we didn't know. You know, an example, uh, we had somebody go day one and say, hey, here's a new dashboard. You 5,000 users click it right now. It's available to you. Didn't let us know what's happening. And, you know, that didn't bring the server down, but it definitely slowed everything to a crawl because we had 5,000 users that were unplanned hitting one thing at basically the same time. So. There's a lot of things. Feel free, as I mentioned, to reach out to me. I'd be happy to chat. If there's, if Tableau wasn't helpful, if there's things that I can help you out with, um, I'd be happy to talk with you. Perfect. We've got one more from Patrick. Um, is there a new server feature you wish Tableau would prioritize immediately? Um, That's a tough one. <laughs> uh, there's so many things that I would love. Um, I think, uh, so, so, uh, Tableau, so, so, so I mentioned this before, I, I like to sit in the, the in-between between server and design and things. I think server used to do its job very well, which was show visualizations, share visualizations with others. It has since become kind of a monolith. It is, I go to ask data, ask questions, or I can subscribe, or I can do an alert, or I can share a custom view, or I can do this, or this, or this metrics, and all these new things that come out. I think that when a new user today is dropped into Tableau, it's overwhelming and a little confusing. I would like it to Tableau to have a little bit more of being tutorialized and actually showing where to go when someone is dropped into Tableau server so they know what to do and, and kind of understand a little bit more of what they can do and what capabilities they're being offered. Yeah, and I would add on to that. So one of the things that I've always run into an issue, both on the developer and on the server side, is if you share a link out with a consumer and then maybe you change your structure on the Tableau server. And so you create a folder for that specific team because initially they only had one or two dashboards, but now you've developed 10 dashboards for them. So you want to kind of silo those into a different folder, make it a lot easier for user management access. Well, then that changes the URL for everyone that was using that original dashboard. So I would like to see some type of like, at the previous company that I worked, we had, it was called fancy.nui.net. And it basically was uh, allowed you to shorthand the URL. And it basically was a reroute. And so I wish Tableau would implement something like that. So if we wanted to reroute someone and change the background URL, but not where someone is landing, they didn't, there wasn't a huge process or you didn't have to buy another subscription or package such as curator. Perfect. So if there's no more questions, I think that opens us up to our learn from your peers sections. Um, we try to do those at the end to allow you guys to kind of digest the information that we cover today, ask any questions about that, but also to give you some time to think of questions versus just throwing you in um, cold water. So with that, I'll open the floor. If you have a question, feel free to raise your hand and or paste in the chat. Or if you have a tip, trick, anything.
So you have one or more? if you just want to, if you just want to talk, yeah. I mean, you've heard us talk this whole time. So, you know, we like to hear other people jump in and be engaged. Yeah. So we do have one more question. Ever create a content promotion extension or anything better than Tableau Migrate? I can talk about that. So um, the actually, so so Keisha mentioned, and I think she put in the in there the the Tableau data set. So I actually did a presentation that my team, I actually have half of my team are engineers that build applications. So we've actually built an application using the APIs that Keisha demoed, where you can very easily pick things to migrate and deploy them within a very easy user friendly um, uh, location on your browser. Um, so you can always build your own. You can also use uh, the Tableau deployment options that are part of the Tableau server management add-on. So that does come with a tool where you can, it's, it's more built out Flesh out than the tab migrate offering that you're talking about because it is a paid for addition to Tableau. But there's a there's a lot of options. I would say those are the two primary ones: is you're going to build your own, or you're going to use the migration uh, assistant that is built into the Tableau add-on. And then we have one response. Um, we use Tabjolt for all of our dashboards, which are production ready, and it is one of the best tools. I feel the only limitation with Tableau is they are not more targeted to Mac users. So I can actually speak to this. I switched over from a Windows. I've always been a Windows person. Um, and about two months ago, I switched over to a Mac. And I will say it is a lot easier to navigate Tableau on a Windows versus a Mac. <laughs> do we have any other questions? Um, I do have one question for the group. So it looks like there's about 56 people left on the call. Would folks be interested in doing some type of game such as Kahoot um, that would that you can interact remotely um, to answer questions about your Tableau knowledge and different aspects of data design and best practices? Would that be something of interest? If so, feel free to just do a plus one or raise your hand in the chat so we can get a count of that. Perfect. Awesome. Well, I have a question. Like we'll have hey. to, <laughs> um, plan something like that out for one of the next sessions. Sounds good. Uh, well, I have a question. So, Keisha, we didn't get to talk about video games. So, what's your favorite video game of all time? Of all time? All time. <laughs> Oh, that, that's tough. Oh, man, because I feel like it needs to be something that really en encompasses all the different, you know, aspects of video yeah. game that I like. You know what, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go with uh, Minecraft. Because, okay. you know, I play all kinds of different types of games, but I always, I always go back to Minecraft. I don't know, it's, it has a special place in my heart. <laughs> Minecraft is good. It's never been one of my favorites. So what's your number two? I don't uh, like your answer. Give me a different one. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> goodness. Uh, what am I playing recently? Uh, let's see. Recently, we've been playing uh, Stardew, Stardew Valley. I think that's okay. been fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I know the um, Minecraft vein where you, you monitor the crops true. and build your own stuff. And true, so, but okay, I also I like, that. You know, like cyberpunk as well. That was fun. You know, yeah. I have a PC, so I didn't have any of the issues that other folks did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but yeah, all, all kinds of stuff, honestly. I mostly play like single player, uh, though, I feel like this is my, yeah. my go-to. Definitely, get I, I can get behind that. Um, we've How got Tech Mobile for the Nintendo. Uh, you know, you can't stay away from Ooh. the classics. Anybody else have a favorite video? Sorry, I can talk about video games all day. That's just <laughs> one, of my, one of my things. So uh, anybody, any other video games you got a favorite of? Madden? Oh, Madden. So mm -hmm. Tech Mobile mm -hmm. to, to Madden, we're kind of upgrading a little bit. You guys play like Mario Kart? That's a classic. <laughs> I, I'm a big uh, Super Smash Bros. So I really love Super nice. Smash Bros. Nice. So. Nice. Anybody else? Super Mario Bros. 3. I can always I can always play that. Um, Ooh. What is PUBG Astro Mobile? Trick? Yeah, I've never, I, ne I don't know that I know. Oh, it's a mini game. In oh, interesting. Planet Coaster. That's cool. I like the variety. I like this. Yeah. 
<laughs> Aaron, do you play any video games or do we got to kick you out? I think you got to kick me out. <laughs> <laughs> How about uh, board games, though? <laughs> If anyone wants to go run or play some volleyball, I'm all there. Erin <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wants the, the actual physical outside <laughs> games. Uh, <Love> it. <laughs> there's too much <laughs> sun. I like to just sit in the, in the dark. And play. <laughs> uh, awesome. Oh, no, in for, like an actual run, like half marathon out on the road. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, no, I like it. Volleyball on the way. That's, that's, that sounds more like my speed. <laughs> awesome. Well, we appreciate everyone attending today. Um, if you want to hang out and chat, feel free to. Um, we'll have the call open until four, but we want to thank everyone for attending. If you have any feedback or anything, feel free to email myself, Zach, or Steve. We do have an exciting lineup for the rest of the year. Um, we are working on finalizing that now but we will have almost every event planned out through the remainder of the year, hopefully by the end, middle of July. Um, so big news, but really great speakers coming up, not just from Ohio, but all around um, the country. So look forward to those future sessions. Absolutely. Thanks everybody.